I hope my voice will stay, lo stay up long enough for, for, for the rest of this uh, presentation. But let me start by saying many of you probably are asking this morning, what the hell is democratizing property investments? And I don't blame you if you ask that question. Because I think most of you came here this morning to find answers to two simple questions. One, is the property market going up or down? And two, can I still make money investing in property, right? So I'll try not to disappoint you. <clears throat> but I want to begin by saying this, uh, sharing this with you. Seven months ago, the Edge has a similar forum called the Edge Stock Market Forum. At that, at that forum, I say that the stock market <clears throat> the stock market going ahead is probably going to be challenging, um, i.e. that it's not going to be good, and I explain why. But I also told the audience that even in challenging times, there are still opportunities. And if one has good information and, in, and, and analysis, I introduced the age markets, and I explained how one can benefit from the age markets. And if you have not done so, please go ahead and try it. But for those of you who have followed the age markets and my value investing portfolio, you would have realized that despite the fact that the Kuala Lumpur Stock Exchange has, has performed barely 2%, the portfolio that we have has actually performed by 10% in seven months. So it is possible, even in a challenging environment, to be, to be successful in investing. So let me now start today's presentation by first giving you the conclusion and then explain my reasons. Because in an odd way, I think it might be more logical. Where is the property market heading? Personally, I think it is going to be challenging, certainly in terms of value, volume of transactions. So far, prices have held up, but I do think it is possible to see some price adjustments. Does it mean that there are no opportunities to make money investing in properties? Probably there will, there will always be opportunities. But what you do need is you, did, you need to be more informed and you need to be ahead of the curve. And actually, this is what it means by democratizing property investments. It means being informed, having the information, and be able to analyze and find the opportunities out there. I'm skipping some of the speech so that, I, 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 so that there's enough time um, for, for some of you to ask questions if you want, but let me start off with the charts. There are four charts I'd like to show you. They show the price and transactions for landed and non-landed properties in various places, KL, Slangor, Penang, and Johor. You can see that basically prices have held up, volume of transactions have come off in the last 12 months. <clears throat> I also believe that home prices have run ahead of wage rates in the last few years, and this is especially true in urban areas. There's little doubt that property prices have risen sharply in the last five years. And again, you can see this in the chart that we have presented here. Between end of 2009 and end of 2014, average home prices increased 57% in Malaysia. This outpaced total income growth of 31% in the same period as measured by nominal GNP per capita. Still looking at the longer term trends, there was actually no bubble because property prices have been lagging until the recent rally over the last five years. It is worth noting that between 2000 and 2009, average home prices rose by a total of just 39% in the nine years. This was below real inflation and wage rate growth. In the same period, average Malaysian income actually doubled. So if you look at the longer term trend since 2000, average home prices have increased by a total of 113%, while income per capita has actually rose by 160% in the same period. In other words, despite the sharp gain in prices over the last five years, prices have, have, prices have basically slightly lacked income growth and are closer to equilibrium. The next question then is what caused the earlier lack in prices? The answer is large supply coupled with large growth in housing loan. From 2000 to 2007, housing supply grew by just 6%. The large supply was absorbed by purchases buying on cheap credit 
as banks redirected more loans towards households from corporates following the Asian financial crisis. After the US subprime crisis in 2008-2009, developers started to cut back on launches. Housing supply growth rates immediately halved for several years. The supply cuts, coupled with earlier lagging price growth, low interest rates, huge liquidity and higher wages, caused prices to rise sharply in the last five years. Going forward, however, incoming supply is growing strongly again, and therefore, there, therefore you're likely to see some price pressure. In terms of housing affordability, as measured by number of years it takes to buy an average home, it is now 8.4 years. This is the highest over the last 10 years, but again, if you take a longer-term perspective, <clears throat> there have been periods where, 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 where it has been higher. The more pressing issue is the high level of household debt in Malaysia, which is 87%, as Previn has alluded to. In 2008, six years ago, it was 60%. What this means is that effectively banks are the major driver of property market in reality. Bank financing provides the liquidity to absorb excess liquidity in the earlier part of this decade and then help raise prices when new supply started to decline. However, both banks and consumers are now more cautious. The ability to borrow is getting more challenging, as you can see in the, in the following charts. Now, there is a major wild card in the above prognosis that I've just shared with you. The one reason where we could be wrong and where the housing market or property market can become more positive than we have presented is interest rates. Instead of a rising interest rates, it appears now more likely that interest rates may actually fall. Why? Because falling interest rates worldwide with the ongoing currency war is the prevalent global strategy. In other words, most countries are devaluing their currencies in order to boost economic growth through exports. Consequently, it will give room for Malaysia to also reduce domestic interest rates to boost exports without too negatively affecting the ringgit. If this happens, lower mortgage rates will be positive for the property sector. I think the more important question is whether there are pockets of opportunity, even as the outlook for the, for the industry is challenging. Now, as we all know, when the tide rises, everybody gets lifted. But the smart investors are the ones that are capable of finding the opportunities, even as the tide recedes. So I want to introduce to you the H property, which is now accessible online through the web or mobile app. And I think in, in some extent, it, to, to a large extent, it dovetailed very well to what Ho Chi Soon and Previn has been saying earlier. I think when Ho Chi Soon was, was to address the issue of whether the market was going up or down, I think the answer really is it depends on what, it depends on the opportunities you are looking out for. And in the case of Ho Chi Soon, he obviously was alluding to the fact that the opportunities lies in properties along the, the, the MRT system or the, the, high, the rail system. The H property is to help, aims to help the public make better and more informed decisions when they buy or sell their properties, whether as a home or as an investment. Now, I think most of you would have heard this famous quote, right? Give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. And that's what the H property aims to do. It aims to give you the tools to teach you, to help you, find opportunities so that you can make the right decisions to know the risks and to help you discover the gems. What it means is that we have to make property prices and transactions more transparent and more easily available so that we level the playing field between you, the public, and others who are professionals in the business. It means that we have to show you most of the current listings in a way which allows you to make easy comparisons. It, it, it means we got to provide you information where you can analyze trends and make market predictions. You can compare rentals you pay versus what else is available out in the marketplace. You can have a clear understanding of what is hot and what is not, and what is selling in the hot areas. 
at one glance, you should be able to know the environments or the surrounding, the facilities, the neighborhood of a particular location you are interested in staying or buying a property. And before you list your home or sell, or sell your property, you can check what is the right price to lease and what are the prices of comparable properties recently sold. This is an interesting statistics we discovered while we were putting this portal in place. In 2003 alone, 7,500 properties in Malaysia were resold within 12 months. In one year, 2003, 7,500 properties were resold within 12 months for a total gain of 216 million ringgit. What does this mean? It means that the original property owners of these properties lost out 260 million in their ability to sell at a higher price or at 229,000 ringgit per property when this property will quickly flip because they were shortchanged and did not sell at the right price. So what is the right price? What is the right price to offer for property you are interested in? What was the price this same seller that is trying to sell you bought the property previously? Surely this information will help you negotiate better, right? So the H property, and the H property does the same for rentals. What is the right rental to pay? What are people paying in terms of rentals for comparable properties? What's the yield the owner of this property is asking for? And what is the prevailing fair market yield? The question, and these were the questions we asked ourselves because we believe these are the answers that most of you who invest in property, who buys a property, or who is looking for to rent a property would want answers to. The H property that aims to answer those questions that I've listed, and yes, as Keita say, is completely free. So I want to now basically spend a little time with you to try to show you, and these are screenshots out there uh, at the back of, of the hall when you leave. There are people out there, friendly people out there, who will show you how to use it, and, uh, and they will go live on May the 7th. So, what you see up there uh, is a screenshot of the, of, of, of the landing page of the H property. Um, it shows you the area where properties, where, where, the, where, where, where we generally describe as hot properties uh, in terms of either price or volume. Uh, you can decide. So that is a graphical illustration of uh, Kuala Lumpur. Uh, and you can choose, when we start off, we have Kuala Lumpur, Johor, Kuala Lumpur, Selangor, Johor, and Penang, and we will eventually cover the rest of Malaysia. It also covers Singapore, by the way. And before the end of the year, we hope you'll have covered Jakarta, Hong Kong, and Manila, and Bangkok, sorry. So you can actually go in there, you can actually decide whether which particular location um, has, has a lot of activities, either by volume or by price movement. The next chart, if you do a location search, uh, say in this case you, you choose Monchiara, you will be able to get a, at a quick glance all the projects and all the recently transacted prices in and around Monchiara. And you can do that in all other locations as well. As a media company, obviously there will be news there will be news, uh, latest news about developers, there will be news about new developments, uh, and there will be news about new launches and so on. You can find, if for any project of interest to you, you can find indicative prices, rentals, and yields. In this case, I think we have basically chosen the worth, and you can do that for any other properties you, you have in mind. You are able to obtain all historical, well, historical transactions of projects. It gives you a, in, in fact, uh, so it gives you a sense of all historical price trends. It tells you where prices are going, uh, and it tells you whether 
that particular project has a lot of transactions. You can even know if, a, if past transactions were profitable or not. In other words, you, if you search each project, you can even tell you whether that particular project the previous person bought, whether the previous person bought and made money or the previous person bought and, and lost money on it. The, the portal captures all amenities. Uh, so with a bird's eye view, you can see whatever is around you, whether what, is, what interests you is a local school or an international school, or for Mr. Ho, Chin Soon and his son, you know, whether there's an MRT station around it. Um, and then you decide whether that location is right for you. For any location that you have chosen, so let's say you take one of Ho Chin Soon's location near an MRT station, you can compare prices, rentals of all selected properties in and around that location. Before you buy a property or before you list a property to sell, we provide you an indicative value of property that are of interest to you based on past transactions. We show you all the similar transactions that justify the valuation. And the valuation that we have, that we have the valuation algorithm that we have put in place is actually with working together with a professional valuer. Now, what is interesting is that we helped you further because some of us might forget and some of us are too busy with our daily work. So we keep track for you. If you have a particular type of properties you like in a certain location of your choice and you have a certain price range and currently it's not available, you can lease it with us or you can ask us to keep track for you. And when such a property becomes available in listing, you will get an email from us. So, we will have listings of properties for sale. Uh, we will have new launches. We will have secondary markets. And hopefully, we will also be able to work with the banks to provide auction properties. And where next? As I said, uh, the H property now covers Singapore, Malaysia. So, for those of you who buy Singapore properties, go into the H property now. Check out your Singapore properties. Check out what is available. You don't just have to listen to somebody who tells you. Uh, as I said, we'll be covering Thailand, in Hong Kong, Indonesia before the end of the year. Um, and with that, thank you. Um, and I'll take questions if you have any.